What's up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be showing you, yes you, how to make professional looking trading cards like these ones here from the comforts of your very own home. Um, so yeah, basically I'm going to sh just show you the process of how I make my Chaos Galaxy TCG trading cards uh, just so that you guys at home can make your own TCGs as well because you know I think it's really important for this community that we always have new people making TCGs and stuff so hopefully I can inspire a few of you to start your own game like I have but also I need to do a few quick updates first just this morning uh, the morning of the day that I'm filming this video uh, I went to a printing company to ask about getting Chaos Galaxy cards and packs printed so I can sell them to you guys and I'm currently waiting for them to uh, message me about prices and stuff so I can so I can calculate costs and then set the prices of packs and hopefully start selling them um, but because this like whole business type thing is all new to me like I'm only 18 so like I've never set up a business or anything like this before I like you know it might still be a while before they can be on sale because I know I've had a lot of people requesting uh, buying cards and I really want to sell them to you guys but it's just very complicated and there are quite a few things that I have to go through before doing that um, but yeah anyway on to this video okay so in making your own trading cards the things you're going to need are two pieces of paper a pencil some form of colouring thing you can use pencil crayons I, I'm lucky enough to get these um, they're called Copic markers, they're Japanese and they're made for like making manga comics and stuff that I'd use them for my cards. You're either also going to need access to a computer that either has something like Microsoft Word or you know Pages for Mac. Personally I use Pages but you know I've, I've made cards on Microsoft Word too. And then a print and then a way to print the cards off. So the way I make my cards I do it in four steps. Now the first step is the artwork of the card. Now this is my favourite bit personally. Step two is the, the template for your cards. So if I just highlight bits here, obviously this guy here is the artwork on the card all above. And then you take away him and you've got like the name, the stats, the ability, whatever. That's your template. And then step number three is putting them together. And then step number four, which is the final step, is actually having the final card there and putting finishing touches on it and stuff. So we're going to start with step one, which is the artwork. Now, I'm currently working on a Chaos Galaxy TCG card. Um, I have the idea for it, and I'm going to draw its artwork now, so I'll try and do a speed up video for that. And when you're drawing the artwork, you want to try and make it as bold as possible. So, like, you can do thin, sketchy lines like that, which won't really show up on the camera. Um, and it's better to do those first and then go over it in sort of a thicker line like that. Or what I tend to do with my cards is, after I've drawn it out in pencil... Sorry if I can just, um, I go over it in this sort of fine line drawing pen. And you want quite a thin one, My, this one here is 0.3mm. Um, you know you can get 0 0.5 ones or even thinner ones like 0 0.1 and stuff. But the line that this sort of makes on an A4 sheet of paper is just really there. You can see it in the corner. It's, you know, it's not too thick, but it's thick enough so that there's a noticeable line there. I'm going to go ahead and draw the artwork for this creature that I'm planning and I'll get back to you guys in a minute.
artwork of this card officially finished and now I'm going to get on to stage two of making a trading card, the template. Okay, so to make a template you're going to go onto your laptop computing device like my one here and then you're going to open up Microsoft Word or Pages if you're on Mac or whatever the equivalent of that is. So I'm going to go on Pages here and then create a new document and then what you're going to do is you're going to take another trading card like a Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon card I'm just taking Yu-Gi-Oh here because uh, I actually play Yu-Gi-Oh. You're going to make the sheet of paper you see on your screen the actual size of a sheet of A4 paper. So, for example, I'm just taking this A4 sheet that I drew my little guy on before. And you're going to change the zoom. I think, yeah, 150 is, is pretty much the same um, size as this sheet here. So, yeah, take it to 150 and then you get your Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering or whatever trading card. And then you go insert, shape, and you just get a rectangle. And then you're going to want to alter it to make it the exact same size as your trading card. I'm just doing this quite quickly. Like, I'm not doing it as precise as I would if I was normally making a Chaos Galaxy card. But then the video would take ages. So now you have this rectangle. And then you go like, along the sidebar here. I think it's a little bit different for a Microsoft Word. But i just used to pages. So change it so there's no fill. Have a have a decent sized border um, that you can see quite obviously because that's what you're going to be cutting around later on. You're going to go ahead and make another box. I'll just copy and paste this one to speed things up and put that inside your, your original box and make it a little bit smaller. And inside this bo second box is where your card's going to be and you can fill this one grey or black or whatever just to make the card look a bit nicer. There you go. Okay, so all the information in your card is going to be here and you're going to want to click on insert text box this is for the name bar of the card um, normally these would go at the top because it's like the main part of the card its name um, and we're just going to shrink this down so it doesn't take up too much space and here we're going to enter the name right what should I call this guy I don't know he's going to be from, from the planet Barrow which is like the desert defensive planet mm. this isn't a final name but it's because he's got like the diamond spike things going on I'm gonna call him and he's like a reptile I'm gonna call him diamond lizard like a diamond lizard okay that's not what his actual name's gonna be but yeah and then I'll have a border on this line border there we go and yeah we'll just edit the text box a little bit um, so that it gets right in the corner there okay and then what you're gonna want to do to get the name box as small as you can so it's right in the corner so less of the card is taken up by the name box you're going to go onto the side bit here where it says their text uh, like the text box style and stuff and you're going to click on text inset and bring that down from 4 which is the automatic setting and bring it down to 0 and just see so there so I'll just bring that down to get the text right in the corner there and now we can Go ahead, make this smaller so you can get more of the picture in. And then next up, you're going to make another rectangle, like the other ones, shrink that down, and there, that's going to be your, sorry, we'll just change this. None. There. It takes a while to fiddle around with some of the things because, um, you know, it's just like getting used to any computer program or anything like that, you know, you just have to fiddle around and see. So there, okay, that's another text box. And then we'll just have, this is just a basic card. We'll have a description box. There we go. And then let's just say we're going to have a stats box right at the bottom. Whoops. So there we go. Um, that's a very basic way to make a card. And I'm going to quickly speed this up and just color fill it and stuff. And you should know how to do this. It's relatively simple. But I'll just make a basic looking creature card. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and made this template here, and I've um, made some flavor text, which I'll read to you in a sec. But the thing that I find really helpful when making cards is if you want this overall, like, sort of dark green look, like I've got here, and you can do it with any color, like if you want your cards to be red or blue or whatever. But a good thing to do for text boxes is instead of having them plain white, because that looks a bit boring and weird, um, there's a cool feature that you can have on... Um, on pages I don't know if you can get an equivalent of it on word but it's changing the opacity of the text box so if we change the fill 
to a white colour and then drag this bottom bar here, change the opacity so that a bit of the green is showing through. I think it creates a really cool effect with your uh, text boxes that means the text is still visible but um, you know it still has that cool like green effect and uh, doesn't change the feel of the card at all. Uh, I'll just make all these white There, okay, and there's your template done, and you can add in like card uh, stars or you know different rating systems or l like a different element or planet where the creature's from or whatever. But that's pretty much how to make a basic card template. And now I'm going to get onto the part where you combine your creature, i.e., my diamond lizard, with the actual template here. Okay, so this was really simple. What you want to do is if you have your drawing here. You're just going to use your camera and take a photo of it. And you can use your phone or a digital camera or whatever. Obviously can't take a picture now because I'm using my camera to film this, but I'm going to go away, take a picture of it, upload it onto my computer, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so what I've got here is the image of my diamond lizard that I've just taken and uploaded onto my computer. And what I'm going to do now is, because it, because although the picture's great, like it's come out well, uh, you just need to use like a sort of even lighting and a did and like a decent camera and it'll come out okay. But um, we still have this white background which I don't want. I want the background to be like look like he's in a desert. So I found a website that you can use if you go on your internet or whatever, and it's called Pixlr.com. So that it's literally just spelled Pixlr.com. You're gonna go on that. And it's free. Like, I've not paid for anything. You just use it like whenever. And uh, you click on Pixel Editor that launch the web app. And it takes you to this. Open image from your computer, and then find the image that you've just done. Uh, okay, I managed to find it. <laughs> and then um, you click on the fill pot thing there. And then you're gonna find the color that you want. So we want a sort of sandy, goldy color. Find that, click OK, and then literally just click on the bit that you want to fill that colour. And there you go. You've got a gold background. Like, you can't really see it with that glare, but like it looks perfectly gold here. I'll show you in a minute when I print it off. And then you're going to want to crop it down so it's a sort of square shape like the uh, area of the box that we're putting it in. And then go File, Save. OK, and then you save it as Diamond Izzard. Save it onto my desktop. Okay, and you can close that because you're done with Pixlr, and then literally you just take the image which you can see up here, and you just drag it onto your document, and fit it into the text box. You might just have to fiddle around with it a tiny bit. Put it in your text box. If it'll fit, that's God damn it. And there you go, there's your card. And if you want to make the most of your paper, then you know you can just copy and paste this template, paste it eight times, because and that's what I do for my cards. I'll just open a file of my Chaos Galaxy cards. And there, as you can see, I've just copy and pasted the template, changed the text inside, and just Photoshop these pictures in. Done that nine times, and then you just print them off, and it's simple as that. So I'm going to print this off and show you what it looks like as a finished product. Okay, so here I've printed off my Demon Izzard. I've just done it on regular printer paper. Normally for my Chaos Galaxy cards, I do it on this uh, glossy, thicker card that you can really get from any stationery shop. So you can just like see the difference of how like rigid they are. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, and yeah, normally what I'd then do is go ahead and laminate it using a laminator, which you can get for in the UK. Um, I bought this one for like 20 pounds and you know, they're not very much, but um, I understand for some of you younger viewers, like, it might cost quite a lot. And then um, it costs a little bit more to buy these, like, laminating sleeves that you um, laminate your cards with. But, you know, for, you know, if you think you're going to be doing this quite a lot, then I'd say buying a laminating machine is quite a decent investment because it gives a nice look to the cards, makes them thicker, uh, protects them from, like, getting damaged and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it means the colour doesn't run too, which is... 
Fantastic. So yeah, I'd highly recommend laminating them if you have a laminator. If not, then don't worry, you know, it's not the end of the world. If you can just get some thicker paper and you can print your cards on that, then it's fine. And then the final stage is cutting them out. And this is the most tedious stage of the uh, entire process. And you can use scissors, however, I, pre I prefer to use a craft knife. I can't actually find mine at the moment. Um, because the problem with scissors is, although that you can get them quite accurate, it takes a while to cut out and because you're cutting like that, it's not just one straight movement, you can end up with quite a wobbly line, which, because the cards you're going to be making are relatively small, you know, although it might only look like a tiny wobble in the cut, you know, it, it can actually make quite a big difference when you look at it. Okay, so here we have Diamond Izzard, and like I said, doing it with a craft knife is much better. I can't find my craft knife at the moment, so I've tried it with scissors, and like, you know what I mean, although I have cut across the black line at the top, it has gone a bit wobbly because it's not been just a straight cut with a knife and a ruler but remember kids always be safe when you're using a ruler I mean <laughs> I mean when you're using a knife or scissors <laughs> anyway here is the final product diamond Izzard. here is his artwork and he's got 330 attack 250 health and he reads a lizard with a cursed diamond growing inside its heart the stone's power has fused itself with the lizard creating a deadly reptile Woo. So if you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, then please like, comment and subscribe. Um, if you didn't find the video helpful, then please tell me why. And if the, you think there's anything I just missed out, then uh, please just ask me a question and I'll do my best to answer it in the comment section below. But for now, this has been Zach from the Chaos Galaxy and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.